evolved into a continuous wave of boat building business began with just a ripple when in 1917 Captain Addison Whitaker brought his family and his passion for fishing from New Jersey to Florida. His 92 year old son has fond memories. The fishing was just terrific here and they used to go up to the to Stewart in the evenings and watch the, tar or the hand line fishermen come in and they would uh, bring in like maybe a thousand pounds of bluefish and mackerel most every day. And uh, so uh, dad thought, well, that sounds awfully good it's for, it's for the winter time. So he started coming down in the winter time and uh, started handline fishing at first with a little boat called a Phantom that he bought, a 24 foot boat. Captain Ad started making lots of friends who all wanted to go fishing. And dad said, no, I can't take you fishing. He says, this, there's no place to sit down. This, this big fish box was in the back of the boat, and right behind him was just enough room for him to stand with this tiller that he'd, he'd steer the boat with, you know, he'd steer it with his legs. He did recognize, however, that he was steering right into a golden business opportunity, and it wasn't long before Captain Ad invested in his maiden fleet of charter boats, and that's when Kurt started drawing out his own future. This is the original sketch of the first boat he designed and built when he was 13. I, I was interested in boats, of course, fishing and everything else, because that was my dad's business. But I guess my passion was that, uh, with boats, <laughs> actually with boats. When he crafted the 33-foot Shearwater, he used a hull design that would set the benchmark for all the Whitaker sport fishing boats to follow. He also set in motion the footsteps that many years later, his son John would follow. What I've been able to do is take a great design and work on making it better and better and better, and I'm really glad to be part of that. Part of making it better today involves making it bigger, lighter, and faster. I don't. Did I talk to you yesterday about it? The early boats would use solid planking, mahogany planking, much like every other boat that was being built at the time. And nowadays the boats are diagonally planked with multiple layers of wood and it's called cold molding. It's, it's fiberglassed over the top and finished out with shiny paint and uh, um, the, the fit and finish is, is a lot different. This 76-footer is the latest creation and requires the latest tools. You have the ability to now test, test run the boats on the computer and visually rotate the boats around and, and check, you know, to make sure that things are going to look right when you build them. And it also gives us the ability to build parts of the boat ahead of time so that our, our carpenters can construct furniture and beds and, and uh, cabinets on, on the floor, even though the boat's still being built. Well, of course, everything's changed as far as the boating industry. Well, that's just sort of evolved, you might say. It went along with it. An evolution that now spans 50 years and three generations of fathers, sons, brothers-in-law, and nephews, a small family business that learned to change with the times. We realized that uh, to be successful in our industry, you can't stay with what you were. And family-wise, we were very fortunate to make some decisions that allowed us that flexibility. Decisions about one small business that has now grown into five, building, repairing, brokering, a reflection of skill and handiwork. I think I'm a lot like my dad in a, in a lot of ways. We both love Florida and love fishing and uh, the boating community and uh, we're both fairly artistic. He's more of a painter. I love photography. Uh, we both have a really good eye for what looks good and what doesn't and we're very particular. And I think that this uh, has helped our product become what it is today. Product and pride that are destined to ride the tides into the future.